In this lesson, we are going to talk about a rate of change review. And so rate of change is the change in one quantity compared to another quantity. So that's like the change in our rise versus the change in our run, or the change in y versus the change in our x. A key thing to remember here is we're talking about a difference, which means we're going to be using subtraction. So a lot of times when you're looking for rate of change, a lot of people use this formula here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I actually like to simplify that to just think about it's the change in y over the change in x. This little triangle there means delta, and that means change. And so I'm finding the change in my y values versus the change in my x values. You do need to make sure that your x values and your y values match up. So... Um, does the order of the points make a difference? As, again, as long as you're using the x and the y values from the same points, and they're in the same order there, it doesn't matter which point you use first. As long as you do it right, it should all work out. Okay? And then a couple of key little notes to make here. y is the same thing as f of x. So whether you see y or you see f of x, they mean the same thing. When you see a bracket like this that's not an ordered pair, those are actually both x values. So I like to take those and just put them right in the place of my x values in my formula. So let's try one. So if I'm given this, this function, f of x equals x squared, which happens to be graphed right here, um, what is the average rate of change from f of negative 3 to f of negative 1? And then again, we're going to do a second one from 1 to 3. So let's talk about this first one. I know that this negative 3 and this negative 1, those are x values because this is saying f of negative 3. So what is y when x is negative 3? And f of negative 1, so what is y when x is negative 1? So I like to make myself a little table, because remember, we're trying to find the difference in y over the difference in x. They give me my two x values, negative 3 and negative 1. I'm going to go find my y values. Now you can choose to either plug them into the formula, or they give you a graph here, so we could use the graph. So I'm going to complete the point where x is negative 3. So I'm going to go over, starting at 0, to where x is negative 3, and find where my graph matches. And it's all the way up there at 9. And then I'm going to go to where x is negative 1, go up to where it matches, and it happens to be at positive 1. So then, I'm going to put, remember it's our y values on top, so I'm going to say 9 minus 1. And then I'm going to go the same direction with my x's, and I take negative 3 minus negative 1. So again, I'm taking my, we could call this y2 and y1 with x2 and x1. It's the same thing. Okay? So 9 minus 1 is 8. I do have a double negative here, so negative 3 plus positive 1 would be a negative 2. So my rate of change for this first one would be negative Four when I reduce that. So let's try it again when I'm talking about from positive 1 to positive 3. I like to, again, make my table. And that 1 and the 3, are they going to go in my x column or in my y column? They are both x values. Usually, in a rate of change question, usually they are going to give you the x values. So then I've got to go find my y value. So if I start with 1, I'm going to go to where x is 1. And where do I match? Right there. So it's up 1. And then I'm going to go to where x is 3. Count all the way up there. And it's at 9. Set up my rate of change. It almost looks like a division symbol. But those are actually subtractions. And so which ones do I put on top? x or y? y's go on top. So I'm going to subtract my two y values. Now in the first one, we went down. So let's try going up just so I can show you it doesn't matter which direction you go. So this time if I take 9 minus 1, then I have to go the same direction on the other one, 3 minus 1. Sorry, minus 1. <laughs> so 9 minus 1 is 8, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So when I reduce that, I get 4. Now I want you to think about how a quadratic function works. Remember we have this axis of symmetry. Oop. Okay. And so when I'm finding the rate of change from these two points to these two points, they're just reflected across. So wouldn't it make sense that their rate of change would be very similar? They're just in two different directions. 
Okay, so let's do that again. Same thing. This time we're given a bracket. So do you remember what type of values those are? Remember, this is not an ordered pair. This is simply our x values. They're giving us the first and last point in our function, which technically is not true in a quadratic function. But it's the first and last point they want us to look at. So I'm going to take those values and immediately put them in my x column. And then I'm going to go find my y values. So I'm going to go to where x is negative 8 and go down. There's my point. It's at negative 10. Then I'm going to go to where x is negative 6, and this time I have to go up, which makes that a positive 2. I'm going to set up my rate of change. And which ones go on top? Yeah, and it doesn't matter whether you say negative 10 minus 2, or if you took 2 minus negative 10. What does matter is when they match up. So right below where I put the negative 10, I need to have the negative 8, because they're next to each other. So the negative 8 has to go there, and the 2 has to be above the negative 6. So when I reduce this, I'm going to take care of my double negative there. But I have negative 10 minus 2, which makes a negative 12, over negative 8 plus a positive 6 is over negative 2. Now think about this. We're going like this from this point to that point. Well, this point to this point right here. Okay? That is from left to right increasing, so my rate of change is actually a positive 6. So take a look at your picture and make sure that your answer makes sense. Okay? Now in the next one, it says that our interval is from negative 2 to 0. So again, what type of values are those negative 2 and 0? They are x values. So I'm going to put those in my x column. Then I've got to go find my y values. So where x is negative 2 is right here. And so that is the point positive 2. And then where x is 0 is right here on the origin. And if you look right there, we've got negative 10. Now this time, just kind of thinking ahead, when I'm looking from this point to this point, so here, is this function increasing or decreasing? It's decreasing. So should our slope, should our final answer be positive or negative? It should be negative. So let's set up our rate of change formula. I'm going to put my y's on top, so I'm going to say 2 minus negative 10. You could go the other direction, say negative 10 minus 2. That would work as well. Then I'm going to match together. If I start with the 2, that means it has to be above the negative 2. If I start with the, or if I have negative 10, it has to match with the 0. Take care of our double negative here. We get a 12 over 2, which reduces to, sorry, that's a negative 2, which reduces to a negative 6, which makes sense. We said our slope should be negative, right? Awesome. In example 3, and I think 4, these are examples where we have no graph, and so it's the same process. They're going to give us our x values in this example because they're saying f of 0, so what is y when x is 0, and then what is y when x is 1, and we've got to go find our y values. But this time, all they give us is the formula, which is fine. We're just going to plug it into the formula. So I'm going to say 2 times 0 squared minus 8 times 0 plus 6. So with all these zeros in here, this is going to cancel and this is going to cancel. So I get a 6. When I do the next one, I get 2 times 1 squared minus 8 times 1 plus 6. Start with your exponent. You could just plug it into your calculator, but start with your exponent. So now I'm going to have 2 times 1, which is just 2 minus 8 plus 6. So this becomes negative 6 plus 6 which is 0. Awesome. <clears throat> so now we do our rate of change. So I'm going to set that up. Remember, um, in the top of our fraction, we put our y values. So I'm going to say 6 minus 0. And then we just have to make sure that we match. Above the 6 has to be the 0, and above the zero, or below the 0 has to be the 1. Okay, they have to match. So 6 minus 0 is 6, and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So our rate of change is 6. Try example 4. 
be very mindful of the negative. Pause the video if needed. So again, they give you your x values of 0 and 2. And we've just got to plug those in. So we're going to have a negative 0 squared plus 4 times 0 minus 7. With all these zeros here, all of this cancels, and we're left with negative 7. But then I have to do it for the second one, negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2, missed my 4, <laughs> minus 7. So I get a negative 4 minus 8 minus 7. That's lots of negatives in there. Um, it looks like I'm getting negative 12 and minus 7 would be a negative 19. So set up my rate of change. I'm going to subtract down with my y's on top. Negative 7 minus a negative 19 over 0 minus 2 because I'm going the same direction so that the 7 and 0 match and the negative 19 and 2 match. Double negative there, we get a 12 over negative 2, which reduces to a negative 6. And that's it. Rate of change is something that you should have seen all throughout first semester algebra. Um, and so this shouldn't be a whole lot of anything new. If it is, make sure to reach out to your teacher. You can go ahead and move on to your assignment.